Hi, everyone. You are listening to a Heart Space podcast with Dr. Jean Malloy and Val Spees. These podcast discussions are recorded with the intent to support those of you who are dealing with grief in your lives. We know that there are lots of issues to work through when you've lost a loved one, and that is why we're here to help you through this healing process. Today, we're going to be talking about what are the essential things we need. And Val had a great metaphor for this. She calls it a life raft. And the idea is it's what you need. So can you tell us a little bit more about your your metaphor here of a life raft? Okay. Um, well, to start with, I, I feel like when you go through uh, the tragedy of a loss and um, you're trying to refocus on your life, it, it, it feels like you've just been set off in a, a, a life raft, you know, that everything that you held on to as your, your home, your stability, all of that has now shifted. It doesn't mean it's a big ship that totally sunk, but in some way you feel like you've been set adrift from it. You're no longer feeling that um, confidence and comfort and security uh, within your home base. You're like out there adrift in the sea. So I feel like um, one way to look at all of this is to think about, well, if that's the case, what do I need on my life raft? Because I... I definitely feel this separation. And uh, if I'm not at home, if I'm not feeling at home and secure, what do I need? What are my basic needs that I need to have with me right now? Yeah. And I think that that is really common, that sense of of the drift at sea with no compass, like all Mm. of your bearings of what's your true north and which way am I going? You don't even have your own guidance system anymore. You're not even sure where you're headed. Good point. And you're just floating along, just trying to even take stock of what just happened to me and uh, without any tether to anything and no sense of where you're going. Oh, such a good point. Definitely uh, feel that, (laughs) that losing of the compass and, um, things that were so second nature to me before um, are not right there at my disposal. Right. Some things that were so automatic aren't mm-hmm. automatic anymore. So then you do feel like, okay, well, what are the basics? What, in order to just keep myself on top of this water, you know, keep my head up, what, what do I need? And I think it's important that uh, we are aware of those things because life can throw at us things that seem urgent and like, get this done, get that done. And really at this point in your life, taking care of yourself has to be your number one priority. And it can be, it can feel like, well, I'll wait and do that later. Or I can get more sleep next week, or I can balance my diet better next week, or I'll exercise or whatever are the things that would be on someone's life raft can feel like they get pushed because something else seems more urgent. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> and those exact things are what um, can be debilitating to you. If you aren't taking care to get the right amount of sleep and uh, to eat well and all of that, then you, um, you'll you suffer in a lot of other ways. You'll just be adding to the discomfort, the unease. Right. It's it's like if we use that letter, metaphor of the life raft, when you stop doing the things that you need to do, you you make your life raft smaller and smaller and you give yourself less and less space. Uh-huh. And so now you're you're trying to keep floating, but you have less life raft because you are um, chopping away at it by not doing the things that actually help keep you afloat. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and so if we can think about, well, for most people, what are the things that keep them afloat are sleep, re- you know, rest, wakeful rest, uh, nutrition, some exercise and, and contact with other people. Right. So if we were thinking of 
um, what are our essentials. Those are our essentials right there. And you do give yourself permission to just um, recoil and lay on the couch all day and say, well, I'm in mourning and that's it. So uh, now I'm laying on the couch for hours on end and not eating as I should because you don't have your, you can either overeat at that point or you can undereat because um, it's a different effect on your diet to be in a reclined position all day. Right. It's tricky too to know like when you're mourning, you're, we're resilient and our bodies will tell us what we need. And we do want to go with that. So if you're tired and you need to rest, then you should rest. And so if you need a nap in the afternoon and you never took a nap in the afternoon, you might become somebody that st starts to have naps in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And the tricky thing with depression though, is that it's a spiral downward. And so there can be times where it's misleading. You feel like you want to rest all day and that can be what you need to do. But when it becomes three or four days in a row that you haven't gotten off the couch, then you have to say, okay, I know my body also needs to move. And I also need to see other people. So sometimes it's a matter of kind of keeping track and sort of in allowing yourself to do the things that feel good, but noticing, hey, it's been quite a while and I haven't even spoken to anybody mm -hmm. or I haven't been alone. Like it doesn't matter which side which of the side spectrum, it it's just trying yeah. to stay in moderation. Right. And if you're, um, if you are feeling adrift, then you kind of take that on as your new identity is I'm adrift. I'm uh, solo now. I'm you know, separating myself even more. I'm watching the land move further and further off into the distance. And uh, that's not healthy. And it's also not healthy to find yourself uh, constantly in social interaction. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's that balance because you, grieving is a social process. We do need an audience. We do need other people to connect with, to witness our grief. So it it is not a solitary thing, but there are some aspects that are solitary that you do have to do by yourself. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, some of both has to happen, but if you're so afraid of being alone that you never let yourself be alone, well, that won't work. And if you just cut yourself off and say, I just don't feel like the hassle of making conversation. And granted, when you're really down and you're grieving, just making eye contact, starting conversations, mm -hmm. doing the volley, like keeping your concentration on what the other person said can be so hard. That it almost feels phony to me uh, to go out into social um, scenes at this point. It feels phony. You're, you're saying, oh, yes, no, don't worry, I'm fine. And, um, and sometimes you really don't care. You don't really want to hear what other people are doing all these wonderful vacations with their spouse or their children or, you know, parents, whatever your loss was. You don't necessarily want to hear about that. Right, right. It can be very hard to connect with other people. Uh, and so, again, moderation would say that you keep some sort of record and you keep enough social contact and enough solitude on your life raft. Okay, so we have that for socially, and there right. should be probably um, some sort of lifeline that you have with a particular person oh, that you know you can reach out to. Right, then that's the person that almost doesn't count as a social contact because you trust them so much that you don't have to make sure your hair is washed, or if you spilt something on your shirt, you don't feel like, oh no, I've got, like, this is somebody who totally accepts you as you are, is there to support you. And so it almost doesn't feel social because there's no sense of having to put yourself together for this person. Okay. So knowing as um, a yoga teacher, I know that mind, body, and spirit are all attached. And that if you allow yourself uh, to fall into a pattern that's not keeping the body healthy, then that's going to have a lot of effect on your spirit and on your mind. 
So um, if you are not eating well, so say you don't feel like, well, now I don't want to just cook for myself. And now I'm, I'm eating poorly, not eating full meals. I don't deserve a whole meal set out on the table. So I'm just going to, um, I'll eat this veggie burger, whatever, you know, and then it, it can start to deteriorate where you're not fully supporting yourself with the correct nutrients and the variety of food that will keep your body functioning in a, a light and healthy way. If you go to the heavies, if you start eating heavy foods because it's just easier and the body um, is not assimilating that food because you're not moving around as much, then that affects your state of mind as well. Sure. And again, that sense of moderation, I think is important because you, you, you touched on a couple things there. One is like, again, grief is a process. It's going to turn up anything you have going on. So if you have any thoughts of not being worthy, and then you're like, well, I would cook a full meal if the other person was here. Okay, then you're worthy too. So make the full meal for you. Mm. And it can be hard to do that. Um, sometimes you can be craving certain comfort foods. And we know that comfort foods do make us feel better. So there is almost a medicinal kind of aspect to it. But if it's four days out and all you've done is put French fries in the oven mm -hmm. and you haven't eaten anything but French fries in four days, okay, that's not like... So some sense of healthy, balanced nutrition and comfort foods and respecting your body's cravings in moderation have to be on the raft too. Okay. So we need a, a good, healthy assortment right. of food. And, and, and letting yourself in, indulge in foods that make you feel better within moderation and, mm -hmm. and then also at times forcing yourself to make friends with vegetables and, and make a full meal for yourself sometimes too. What I've learned from the um, Ayurveda studies and understanding the um, nutrition as eating the, uh, the six tastes, the different um, balance of, of nutrition that's important to bring into your body is the simplified way of this method is to eat the colors of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. So I actually have set um, my vegetables and my fruits, all bright, beautiful colors on my counter right in front of that's a, a bar that's right in front of my sink. And um, I really don't look at it as, oh, I need to eat something healthy, but, but that it's that this food is beautiful and I, I want to um, bring it into my body and, uh, and enjoy the eating process, the uh, placement of it on my plate, and and let it be something uplifting for me. And I do find that it is right. And I think that also helps too with the, um, you know, what to eat if it can be hard to know what to eat. If you think about, like you said, food as a rainbow, it's like, uh -huh. well, I haven't had any reds in a while. Let right. me get some uh -huh. beets, or I haven't had a purple. Let me get some cabbage. Like you can kind of keep the moderation by looking and at the colors and what you have you can, not had you can actually and i i was studying all the different the different six tastes of salty sweet all of that and it, there were these long list of vegetables and nuts and fruits and everything under each category and i thought lord i can't keep track of all that and then i saw the Colors of the rainbow, eat the colors of the rainbow. I said, now there's what I can focus on. Right. And, and it is, um, I definitely would want to have that basis of food on my necessity list. Right. Yeah. Because it, if, again, squash is yellow. When you just think of the colors, you're also uh -huh. eating foods that are um, very close to where they came from. Mm -hmm. And so it's... Um, it makes it easier also to stay eating healthy if you're looking for the colors because, again, things that are in boxes aren't colorful. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had a, a nutritionist once tell me that while you're eating 
um, processed foods. And I said, are you crazy? I mean, I read every label of everything I ever eat. And she said, well, if there's a label, <laughs> it's processed. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we veer off here. Yes, yes. Um, so, so healthy foods in, in, in indulging your appetite um, and balancing when you need comfort foods, if your appetite is decreased, okay, but you can't let it go too long where you're not getting enough calories and not enough nutrition in. Okay. And I would say of the things that have seemed really critically important to me over this past year, that one of the most important is um, being outdoors, being in sunshine, looking at flowers, uh, taking in the energy of the trees around me. Uh, there was, there has been a tendency on and off all the way through and still will be to just stay at home like we were saying on the couch and and not even going out into the sunshine in a full day or for some people I imagine several days in a row yeah and people can it kind does of kind of affect you doesn't it I mean absolutely. emotionally isn't absolutely. that absolutely I think the the sun itself on your skin if you're out and you're walking around you're moving just that stimulates your body but there is something also about nature in terms of um feeling connected to the earth, feeling connected to life. And so again, you might not, there might be times where you don't feel like it, but you do say, okay, I'm going to get off the couch and I'm going to go for a walk. Mm. And, and so there are times where you, you kind of work with what your body wants and you indulge it, but then there's times where you also have to kind of, all right, it's been this much, the many hours, this many, you know, two days, three days in a row, really then, you need to get up and get moving because okay. depression is a spiral. And so while you can rest as your body needs and you know that you're going to feel sad, you do have to provide for yourself at least that life raft, that, that um, bare minimum that keeps you afloat and, mm -hmm. and moving and getting out in nature uh, would definitely be important in that. Mm -hmm. Because I have to say, there are days where I feel like I'm, I just have to literally pick myself up off the floor, off what, however you want to visualize that and keep going, like just pick myself up by my shirt collar and, and keep going. And I do recognize that feeling the sunshine, being out amidst the trees and everything can can uh, shift that um, considerably. Yeah, it's going to be disruptive to the pattern, right? It's going to break up that pattern. And, mm -hmm. and like you said, sometimes it is a sheer act of will to get up, get dressed, and walk around the block. But do it. <laughs> but do it. But do it. Yes, don't just keep pushing your um, your life raft out. Right. Further and further, further out. Adrift just, and yeah. smaller and smaller and right. And and connecting with people and 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 maybe giving that one person you really trust, seeing if they'll like share some of that with you and and give them permission to push you. Mm -hmm. You know, like if if that person you really trust comes and says, Come on, we're getting up, we're going, let them have a little bit of sway over you. Mm -hmm. if you really trust them and you know that they're have your best intentions and if they say you look like you need to go for a walk let them take you for a walk <laughs> and we can also um be adrift even if our we're surrounded by family members in our home we can still be isolated even though they're physically right there and there's a tendency to, um, I believe from other people that I've talked to, I've ended up myself in a situation where I'm at home alone, but from others where, yes, they have family members all around them, and yet it's even more painful when you isolate yourself from them and not recognize that there could be some nurturing aspects in in um, reconnecting there. Right. And I think sometimes when people are in a group and they are not having that communication about the death, 
that leads to that sense of loneliness, even though there's people around you, because one of the most important things to talk about, to connect about, is somehow off limits. And so people are, then you feel very alone, even though you're in a group, if you can't talk about the person, refer to that person. Mm -hmm. and, and then people can feel very much adrift, even though there's other people on their life rafts, there's no connection. And I imagine that sometimes you wouldn't even want to get too close to someone else who is hurt by the same loss, because then you feel like now I have to deal with their their pain as well as my own. Right. Would that be a reason that some might isolate? It would be a reason, although it would be, and it would be something where probably people who live together who are grieving the same loss wouldn't be able to function if they only spoke about that. They still have these other areas of life that they do have to connect with. Mm. So again, it's this sense of, are we ready to join our life rafts together so that we can talk about mm -hmm. this person that died? And then, nope, now we have to go back to functioning. Who's going to unload the dishwasher? Who's going to and function as a group without mentioning that person? And so it's can be a very tricky thing to navigate. Mm. Seems like a good reason to, you know, have some counseling on, I would think. And um, so maybe you need a counselor when you're out on that life raft. <laughs> maybe you need helpful your cell phone's working and yeah. you can call in. Yeah. Because um, it's, it's pretty hard to navigate all on your own. It really is. It can be. I think other people can be that compass. Mm -hmm. Your compass isn't working find people you trust either that significant other person you know oh not always a person you expect sometimes it's a, a different person than the one you expect mm -hmm. but and let them use their guidance system for you a little bit okay so when we think of our basic needs then what would you say so we discussed uh food nutrition mm -hmm. uh sleep and rest and social contact solitude and then that that other person you really trust okay. um, we also discussed getting out and moving your body and being in nature okay i think those are the ones that we've come up with today but for whoever's listening it may be helpful for you to write down your own list what's on your list good idea right what are your basic needs and are you making sure that those are provided for? Mm -hmm. And if they're not, then this needs to go on the to-do list. This becomes urgent, yes. urgent and important. Uh, okay. And so you don't spend your time doing all the urgent things that aren't important, but make it urgent. Make your own needs urgent. Mm. Definitely. Don't get lost. Just keep, keep going. Keep picking yourself up and uh, doing all those good supportive things uh, to, to give you um, that lightness of being that you would like to, to feel again. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to be doing a workshop coming up pretty soon in the fall, and that um, will be a workshop where it's a two-day workshop. So we really are going to dive deep into um, the different aspects of grief. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be over the weekend here coming up in October, the first weekend in October. And so if you can join us here in Tampa, we will. Right, right here at the Lotus Pond. Uh, so watch for more of, of our podcast we keep exploring uh, new ideas uh, not new ones but <laughs> right, right, right. Well, we, age-old ideas yes, that uh, that are new to those of us who have not experienced this um, firsthand before and right. um, so critically important I so appreciate uh, your knowledge and sharing oh, and Dr. Malloy thank you appreciate all that you've bring to our podcast your knowledge as well as your own firsthand experiences it's i think it makes it very real for people when they can hear us discuss it this way and also you can um, follow us on social media and then you can interact with us and if if there is something you would like us to discuss by all means you can reach out through our social media good idea 
All right. Thank you. And thank you all for listening. Thank you.